Hello, good day, and welcome back to um, Section 5, Part 5, and we're going to continue with our learning AngularJS. In this section, we're going to be enhancing the to-do application we started in um, Section 4, and we're going to learn a few, one or two, new um, Angular directives. But we're definitely going to add some new features. There are a few things you can do to or a simple to do application, even though it's just a simple application. We can nice it up a little bit and make it even more usable than it is now. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to do a quick review of what we've learned so far in AngularJS or about AngularJS. All right, so let's get to it. OK, so some of the enhancements we're going to be doing in this video to our simple application is editing the task title. So far, we can add a new task, remove it, but we can't edit it, the title once we create it. We want to be able to modify our progress, of course, because now we're creating our, um, our task with a default of not started, and we can't even change that. We can't create a task that's already completed or a task that's already in progress. And even if we could create it only with not started, it would be nice to be able to go back and edit it and change it. And then we want to be able to add a description. So if we have tasks where we need some more details, um, that we don't need to put in the description, but just additional information, well, we like to have a description for that. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. All right, so let's start looking at our example here. So I'm going to start off by um, looking at the last bit of uh, example code from the previous section. And this is where we ended. So we, we wrote this out, and we had this application going. So let me just refresh it. And we had bread there in by default because of this guy. I'm not going to explain that again. And so you can click add and, you know, you can delete things. And so you can add some stuff, some more stuff. And, you know, delete X, A, for example. Okay, so we had that. So in this section, like we said, what we want to do is enhance this a bit. Uh, we can make this a little bit better. For example, we have no way of editing something. So we can certainly add something or remove it, but it would be nice to be able to change something either the title or the status of it so let's kind of do that so we're going to start out from right here what i did was i literally copied that code and pasted it here and i made one modification only and that's here um, i essentially added this bar and this line and so if i refresh this um, and then i do i add something and i remove the default also now you see I have um, what I just added and this hyperlink here. My hyperlink, because I know I want an action to be um, taken when I click the, this link, this E, which is edit, I have a function here called edit item and I pass the index because I want to, just like when I wanted to delete, it would make sense for me to be able to know which thing I want to edit, right? If I can imagine, if you imagine I had several things here, I had C, I had D, um, I have to be able to say which one I want to edit, right? And so, um, hence the, I'm called the, the, the edit method with the index, the current index for that thing that I want to edit, just as in delete. And so that's the only change that I've made. I haven't made any other change. I just kind of want to show you, just like we did before, step by step, how we evolve this, okay? So that's one change. The second change I, I'm going to make is now to, um, you know, define an edit method. Um, here, event handler, and so I do that in here. So I basically, you know, just add this method function index, just look just like remove. And now when I say edit, when this is call, I'm gonna look up the title in my list, sort of my database here, my array list, and get the title for that current thing, and then assign it to the scope that title, and that should. Changed it, right? Change it, right? So let's just see if that works. If I add A and I do that and then I click edit, you see A comes back, right? Let's do B. Add that. I'm going to edit A. I can edit B. Okay? So, so that seems to work. So, so that's fine. So, so far, just these two changes and that's looking good. Um, but how do we actually make the change, right? So yeah, you can click there and so on. But um, once we make the change, so for example, once we do A, add this, and we edit it, we want to be able to click some button after we've made some change, and I change this to B, I want to be able to click a button to actually update this. 
And so notice this is different from when we had a new something new, right? Um, so um, I want to be able to click. So what I did was I added a second button and um, here and I call it update and it calls the update method instead of the add item, it calls the update item, right? Because we don't want to add, if we use add, it would append it onto the list and that's not what we want. What we want to do is replace it with the new information. And also I use um, the fact that depending on what I'm doing, I want to show and add different buttons. So again, if, I'm, if I click the edit button um, here, the edit action, it's going to set this as edit to true. When I click this edit item function is called, it will set the is edit to true. And what that means is that I can use that now to determine whether it's to show. If this is set to true, then I should hide the add button. And if it's false, I should, um, you know, um, show the update button. So, so that seems um, reasonable. Um, so again, very small change. Um, just add this button and this um, another scope variable to allow me to know if I'm going to be editing something or not. And it's going to set here. All right. So far, so good. Um, the next thing I'm going to want to do is so when I add what when I had, was looking at this function before. Um, you see it called this update item, but I didn't write that method yet. So, so let's write update um, so that when I add something, I add something, B, add it, and then I say I want to edit A, for example. Now, let's change this to AA. Now, when I click this, I should access it to change just like that. So how is that done? Well, there's the update um, that's being called from that button that we added um, here. All right, so update. Once you call update, well, it needs to know which object in the list I should be updating. Which one should I change as title? So that's easy. Once we have the index, we know where, but we didn't pass the index in. We only use the index to know which one we should edit. So that's why my edit method um, handler here, when you call it, it stores that index that you pass in here it stores that in a scope variable called scope that index. And there are a number of ways you can do write code. So I could have reused index, sort of like if index is set, I, I use that to toggle and all that stuff, but I want to make this really clear. So once you call edit on a particular item, whatever that number is, the index is going to be stored. And now when you call update, it just reuses that stored index, this guy, it reuses it here to find that thing that you, you said you're going to edit and now assign the scope and of course it clear the input and of course now that we finish editing we can say edit is false that restores us to our add button so here's an example again i click b we said we're going to edit i'm going to do b e and b e e and then i do update it updates this it doesn't add it as a new one and then now it clears it but it also set um you know this to false, edit to false, which causes it to toggle back and show the add button, which is exactly what we want after we update something that we said we're going to edit. All right. So there's still some more things we can, we can do. For example, we have this idea of a status, but we haven't been able to change it. So one of the things we can do is introduce, um, you know, ng, um, just select, um, HTML elements, which we have seen already in our, when we cover talk about HTML element. So this is nothing new. The only thing we're doing here now is we have select, we have the options, not started, in progress, completed, and our ng model is now tied to this task that status. But the only thing I did here was instead of using like just status and title, I sort of put them in an object. So I have an object called task and I have task that title and task that status. And you can see how, and you can ignore this part. This is, this really uh, is copy and paste demo. All right, so, um, so really, um, what does that do for us? So, so I add this new um, HTML element here. And like I said, the only thing I really changed was I went from using a um, just straight uh, 
scope.title to using scope.task. And this is how this works. So I wrote a function called init task. And you'll see all the benefit of this later. So if you call this, what it does it do? It creates on the scope this task property and assign this value, which is another object called task with you know nothing, no value, and empty string, and the status is not started. So that's how it initializes it. And so of course, this is the function that's inside of this function or controller. And then here we create our list empty, we call init, which basically just execute this as creates that. And then of course our is edit is equals to false, right? And now when I am asked to add something, because scope is uh, this object that I want to add anyway, so I just assign it. Um, so actually I could just assign it right here like this. I don't have to assign it to that variable for us. Um, I can just do do this. And when I was updating this code, I didn't fix that. But anyway, so you could see how I could just push that directly, that whole object, because the entire object, because that's exactly what I want to save. When I go to remove something, well, that doesn't change. I'm just removing something at that index anyway. When it comes to editing, well, um, no, it's not just one property I want to edit, it's both of them. So that makes it very easy because I just look up in the array and assign that to task. And you see how easy it makes it. So now it assigns to both of them. So I don't have to do individually. So see, that's the advantage of using scope that task instead of like scope that title and scope that status. Because you can imagine if you add more profit, more um, input elements, it's just going to be a lot, it's harder to keep track of them. And this makes it a little bit easier. And then um, same thing, I set to true, and of course I save the index. When it comes to updating, again, it makes it very, very easy. I just find the location and I store the entire thing. And now after I've stored it, I just call init again to reset my um, scope that task for a new uh, um, object to be created. And so if we run this, we'll see now that I can say A and set that and I can do B and I could set it to in progress add that and I could do C and I can set it to completed and I can add that. And of course, when I go for edit something, as you could see, it works just fine. All right. And of course I can change this to in progress and update it. And you can see it's changing. All right. All right. Um, so that, I'll get back to why that's operating that way. Um, basically the ref, the thing that's pointing to, um, we are actually pointing to the object itself. So when we change it here, it's actually changing the object. So we, we don't need to actually do update, but that's just should sort of make sense because if we have before we were assigning a copy, whereas here, when we create this, um, task and we update and we update it from the UI, we actually assign it into the, the list. And then for the list, we just put a lot of reference to it and assign it here. So, what's in the list is also the same thing that's being pointed to by scope that task. So hence why when we modify it up here, it's also modifying in the list, All right? Um, we're not going to want that later because we don't want that if somebody's typing, making some changes, it change here. What we want is for them to change, make some changes and click actual update, but we'll get back to that. All right. So this is easy, is fairly easy now. All right. Um, the next thing we want to be able to do is be able to, um, add another input. And so the one we're going to add is description. And so, you know, I just had this next property here, one place. And since I added this one place everywhere else, when I reuse in it, it's going to be set it. And here, when I say, um, update or edit uh, or add, it's just going to do the entire thing. Okay. So I really don't have to think about the individual, um, pieces anymore because I'm using this object um, in, to address my thing now, okay? Um, let's see here, oh, all right. So let me go back to here and continue. I was jumping around to click that, okay. So what does this give us now? So if I do A, and uh, it doesn't matter, we see this is working already. One of the things that I can do is B, and I could open this and I can type in some more details here and I can add that. Of course, I didn't change my table. So 
it doesn't show in this but if I edit this and I open this of course there was nothing I didn't add any extra details for um, a but if I do this when I click on B because there's more detail it's it's open automatically so for ones that don't have any detail it doesn't open and for the ones that have detail it opens so how is this done well if you scroll up here and you look you'll see that what I did was I added a new HTML element called details I put a text area inside of it and so that's why when it, you open it you see this text area All right and what I did was I say ng open this is a new directive we haven't seen this before and basically ng open basically says on this element open it if there's a description so that's why when I type a description when there's a description for a task once I say edit it you know it would open automatically which kind of makes sense that um, if somebody tried to edit a task that has a description they should open to show them that oh um, there's something there that I can edit right and then of course if there's nothing then it should close and I can change this too and this would work fine update right and let's go take a look at that awesome we got updated okay all right Of course, yeah, like we said, we want to fix, we're going to fix that issue um, later. You'll see how to fix that. All right. Finally, I want to give you something to try um, as a little homework. We didn't do anything new. The only thing new we actually did was add in this, this ng open and this detail element. Other than that, nothing else was new. Again, like I promised, we're going to fix the issue where when you add something, like A, and you say edit, how you can, while when you type in it here, it's updating there. And that's because what's in the list, it, the same reference to the object is being used here. And so that's why, you know, it's pointing to the same thing, hence why we can do that. And we, that's very easy to fix. But uh, what I wanted you to do, though, is to try something if you will um, if we look at it here's the example um, if we add something hmm, notice there's a check box here so I put a check box and so what I want the check box to do is when you click it it should means completed so it should automatically set the state to completed whatever the state is now, if we were allowed to uncheck this, what should it be? Well, if I had something that, let's say B, that was in progress, I add it, and I check this, it should change it to, to completed. If I check this, it should change it to completed. But if I uncheck it, should it go back to in progress or should it go back to not started? Same here, we should just go back to not started or in progress. And so for that, you would need to kind of remember the previous state. Um, and so what you want to do to solve that problem, make it super easy, is once you check something completed, this should be disabled. And we know to do disable already because we're doing it up here. And so you should disable this checkbox once something is completed. It should be marked as disabled. So it cannot be um, checked or unchecked again. Of course, if somebody really wanted, if somebody completed something but want to change the status, they can still edit it, right? So that's still available. Um, it's just that this button would work that way and so I want you to try and see if you can do that by of course you have to add a handler handler a event handler to set the completed state and you can call it whatever you want but if you look at Friday you could say set completed um, or task completed or something like that and you know go from there and see and then in the next video we'll address the issue this issue so that it's not doing this and it's very simple. All we really need to do is make a copy when we do an edit. Instead of assigning a reference to or uh, handle to the object that we have in the array to task so that both the scope, the edit box here, and using the same thing, all we have to do is really just copy 
or clone this information and assign it and then that would be fine and then it would work perfectly we wouldn't have this issue if you want to look up how to do a copy we cover it when we did java objects uh, but if not don't worry about it we're, we're gonna do it anyway and there are more than one ways of doing that too all right so um i don't want this to go on too long so let's wrap up okay so i hope um you're fairly happy with how your application is going I know we have a little quirk there with the editing. We'll fix that in the next video. Um, so uh, come back and we'll just continue to work on this until we feel like we've gotten, to a point, we've gotten it to a point where we're like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. And then we'll do some other things. Trust me, there are a lot of things that left for us to be, that we can do. And of course, we're, we're just gonna keep it cut nice and light. We're not gonna dive too deep, but we'll dive deep enough so that you feel that you can actually do this stuff and um, you know do something um, reasonable with it if you ever wanted to pursue it. Now, in terms of what we've learned so far, um, we've talked about the ang modules, um, how to create an Angular module. We we haven't seen how to create use multiple modules, um, but uh, we've certainly seen how to create at least a module and use that in our application uh, to create the Angular application. Remember, we use an Angular module and Angular application interchangeably. Um, we've looked at directives and we've been using more and more of them. The new one in this video was ng open. Um, then um, we've used controllers. Um, we've seen in the previous video how to use many controllers, um, the, the video before that how to use many controllers, but when we introduced Angular, but here we've just been using one so far, but you have the idea how to use controllers to um, apply to a certain section of your HTML. And, you know, we've been talking about views and templates, you know, the idea that uh, this can be used kind of interchangeably so almost, but the idea that you, you, know, you create a template, it has this markup in it, and Angular uses that markup with the model it gets from the controller that's designated for that particular template, and it, you know, combines and produces a, a view for you. Um, and we have said that though the model in AngularJS, one of the nice things about it is that it's just simply Java um, script data type, right? Just, just nothing new. Um, if you use, look at some other um, application web frameworks like Ember or Backbone or something, they create, make you create like some special thing that they have. It's still a Java object, but then you'd create like some Ember that model or Ember that view, and then you have to update that or modify that. And here in Angular, you don't really have to do anything like that. Um, so. Uh, it's just slightly different. It's not better or worse. It's just slightly different. Um, to me, it makes it easier. Um, not necessarily better, but in a, in a way easier and kind of better. But let's just don't get too much into that. Bottom line is, you've learned a lot. <laughs> Sorry about digressing there for a second. Um, but you've learned a lot, and I hope you're impressed with yourself so far. Now, um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, let others know and see you in the next video. All right, take care. Bye.